What is up, YouTube? All right, so I'm back and with another video. Girl, you deserve it. All the time you've been surfing away from the realest nigga in here. I'ma take you away and I'll hold you down. I'ma hold you down. I'ma hold you down, baby. Since it is Monday, as promised, it is Mew So Monday. Mew So Monday. All right. So, for those of you that don't know, like, what the heck is a Milso? Pretty much what a Milso is, is a military significant other. M I L mil s o significant other so we are technically called milsos um being that i am in a relationship with a guy that's in the air force i am considered a milso all right so let's just jump right in about my relationship i'm just gonna put it out there we've been together for three years and some change we started going out in 2014 of november so we celebrated already our three-year anniversary so this technically would be year four once november rolls around excuse the lighting going up and down up and down i'm not sure why it's doing that but it's doing that right yeah so pretty much we've been together for four years this year we are in our second apartment together. One day I will give you guys an apartment tour. Yeah, so we're in our second apartment together. Um, he's been actually away since July. He went to basic in July. He's been in the military, though, since August of 2016. I believe that's when he's sworn in. He's sworn in. August 2016, he left for basic this past July. So this July of 2018 will make a year since he left for basic. He is right now, he's in tech school. He's studying to be a load master. So pretty much his job is he's on the planes. They have cargo. They need to drop it off. They have to pick people up. Just all that good stuff. Tanks, trucks. You name it, they load it, the load masters. Yeah, so that's what he does. And I'm very proud of him. So yeah, so I like I said before in my if you watched my other video, I'm 23. My boyfriend is 22. He will be 23 in May. So pretty much how we met, we met in school. We both attended Delaware State University. Shout out to DSU. We met in our school's student center in the MOK. I was sitting in there with my friends. He came in with his loud and rowdy friends. His friends was being flirty, talking to my friends. I automatically noticed, oh my God, this guy has freckles. If you guys can't tell, I got on a little makeup going right now, but I have freckles. So I absolutely love freckles. So that was the first thing that like drew me to him. We were chatting for a little bit. He said he actually seen me before because I didn't even know that we actually lived in the same dorm. Yeah, so I lived on the first floor. He lived on the third floor. But yeah, that's pretty much like how we met. But we didn't exchange numbers then. We were just like being flirty. Hey, my name is Jove. My boyfriend's name is Prince Jovian. Yes, it's hyphenated. Prince Jovian. That is my baby's name. So he either goes by Prince, but most of the people that know him call him Jove or Jovian, Jovi. So he told me his name was Jovi. And I was like, but I thought your name was Prince Jovian. He's like, yeah, but some people call me this. So I was like, well, I want to be different. I want to call you Prince. So I call him Prince. I actually now call him the full thing because I figured that's what your mother gave you. So when I met at him, I was like, Prince Jovian. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. But other than that, I either call him Pooh or I call him Baby, Babe, whatever. 
So yeah, we met at school and then I was scrolling down on Instagram one day and I seen a picture of him, of him pop up and I'm like, mm, he looking a little snackish. So I went and liked the picture and then I went on his page and I seen a few more pictures of him. So I'm like, I'm just going to go ahead and just, just go on a liking spree because he's kind of cute. So I go and I just start liking pictures, liking pictures. And then within like 15 to 20 minutes, I get a DM and it's like, hey, cutie. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so he want to chat. So I'm like, hi, how are you? And he's like, you like all my pictures, but you never talk to me. So I'm like, all right, well, let's change that. Here's my number. So I automatically gave him my number first. So yeah, um, from that point on, we just like hit it off. We were talking every day. Then that was because we started talking the summer of like going into sophomore year. So after freshman year ended, it was that summer. And then we began like talking. We started talking from that point, which was like in July, July 2014. Um, we were talking for a while. Once we actually got back to school, we literally chilled every day, like every day. And then it got to the point where I was no longer even like sleeping in my dorm. Like I was just always, yes, y'all, I was being grown fresh sophomore year. I was being grown. Okay. I was in his room all the time. Um, we were just inseparable. And then it just got to the point where it's like, what are we doing here? So he popped the question, will you be my girl? in November of 2014 and then ever since then it's been pure love. So I just wanted to pretty much touch on the five things that I absolutely cannot stand low-key. It's annoying for people to say to me about my significant other being in the military. Like it's just annoying. Like just don't say it to people. Like don't say it to people. It's annoying. All right? All right. So, from least annoying to most annoying, I will give you guys the rundown of the five things that I absolutely cannot stand that people ask me, say to me, comments, concerns, all that good stuff. All right. So, number one. Number one is going to be, how's Prince doing in the Army? I don't know. He doesn't know. Because he's not in the Army. Because he's in the Air Force. Like, that is so annoying. Everybody automatically thinks, oh, your boyfriend's in the military, he's in the Army. There's a whole bunch of different branches. You have the Air Force, you have, um... You have Marines, you have the Army, you have, you just have different branches. And to automatically assume you see somebody in a military uniform that they're in the Army that's very ignorant of you, I'm just going to put it out there. Like, that's not their branch, especially when they have this whole thing on them that says United States Air Force or U.S. Air Force. Like, they are in the Air Force. They are not in the army. So that's a little annoying. Don't ask me how my boyfriend is doing in the army because I absolutely don't know. And he doesn't know. So yeah. All right. So number two would be, number two would be, when is he coming home? Well, when is he coming home? He's been away for a while. When's he coming back? When will he be home? Girlfriend, don't you think I want him home just as much as you want to keep asking me when he's going to be home. Don't ask me when he's going to be home because if that's going to give me anxiety. That's only going to make me realize that my boyfriend's been gone for almost a year. Like, it's just really annoying. Like, please, please, please do not ask me when he's coming home. He's coming home when he's coming home. When he is finished training, that is when he will be home. Um... Just for the record, his training is a little bit more intensive than uh, other jobs. It just all depends on your job. You, there's not a set time of when you'll be back. Like, basic is like two and a half months. 
And then you had to tackle on when they train for their job. In particular, his job is a little bit longer because it requires a little bit more skill. So he's going to be gone for, you know, quite some time. And me being the loving, supportive girlfriend I am, I have to respect the fact that that's how long his training takes. So, yeah, he'll be gone for a little bit. But please stop asking me when my man will be home because if anybody should be concerned of when he's coming home, it should be me. Don't be so concerned. All right? All right. So the next thing, and I'm kind of reading off of my notes, so don't be like, why the Oh, she keep looking over there. I'm reading off my notes a little bit. All right. So bear with me. Um, the next thing is people say to me all the time, I don't know how you do it. Like I wouldn't be ever to be with my, have my man on the way over there. Like, don't you be missing him? Like that is a lot. I can't do no military relationship. Well, baby girl, guess what? That's why you ain't in one. You and I are two totally different people. Like, we are totally different, okay? How how would that make me look if my man tells me, babe, it's my goal, you know, to go into the Air Force. I, I want to be on the planes, and they're going to pay for me to do X, Y, and Z. I think it's a smart decision. That's my dream. My man say that, right? Right. And then I'd be like, uh-uh. I don't want you to be in no military. Like, I can't take that. Like, I love you and all, but... I can't be with you. Like, that's, that's messed up, right? That's, that's, that's messed up. So, no, like, I, it's just something that I ultimately had to think about. And if I wanted to continue to be in our relationship, I love him and I support him. So, I'm going to have to get over that missing him part. Lord knows I miss him. But I'm going to have to, like, get over that because... It just comes with the territory. Like, would I rather sacrifice us being apart for a little bit or would I rather him be home struggling, not being able to follow his dream because I'm trying to keep him bound here? Like, no, I'm just going to have to sacrifice that time of him being away. So, yeah, it gets a little annoying when people be like, "Mm, that ain't for me. All right, respectfully, that's not for you. But guess what? It's for me. And this is. The cards that I've been dealt with. Just know when he comes home, that miss you is the best ever, okay? It's the best ever. Um, There's nothing like being apart from somebody that you absolutely love and then, bam, you guys see each other. You have so much to talk about. You have so much to, you know, it's just like, it's 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 a love-hate thing with this whole thing. But it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, so the next thing, number four, I think I'm on number four. You know Trump might be sending them to war? Like, you not a little concerned about that? Look, okay, I'm, we're, we're just going to put it out there. Neither one of us, him nor I, voted for that man, all right? We did not vote for that man. Yes, that is his commander-in-chief. But at the end of the day, when you are in the military, you do your job. So I hate when people automatically get this stigma that if you're in the military, if you go to war, you're going to be on the front line, you're going to have to shoot people, you're going to have to do this, that, and the third. Like, it's not about that. When you are in the military, you do your job. Like, yes, there can be dangerous aspects to the military. But danger is everywhere. You driving is dangerous. Like, you talking back to your mom is dangerous. She will slap the hell out of you. Like, it's it's just danger everywhere. Like, life, you cannot live in fear of certain things. So, when people do say that kind of stuff to me, it's like, do you want to give me a heart attack? Like, are you, do you hear yourself right now? Like, yes, we, we, we do follow certain things in politics, but the news is primarily to get views, okay? It's it's so people can watch it. It's to make it interesting. Like, I don't care 
what the bigot says, all right? I just, this is my boyfriend's job. If you are a dentist and you're in the military, guess what? You're not going to be on the front line, sweetheart. Sorry to tell you, that's not your training. Like, if you are in the military and you work at payroll, guess what? Your job is making sure the people in the military get paid. You are not going to be on the front line. You are not about to, you know, you. if you get deployed, you're going to do your job. You're, that's all I'm going to say is you're going to do your job. That's, that's case in point. All right, so moving on to number five, the most annoying thing ever is you guys might as well just go ahead and get married, you know? Military got benefits. Like, y'all wasting time. Like, you might as well go ahead and collect that check. Baby, if you're getting married to collect the check, you don't need to be married. Like, yes, finances are very important when going into a marriage. But you also have to think, is this the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with? Am I just collecting a check? Or do I honestly love this person? Yes, I honestly love my boyfriend. And when the time comes, the time comes. There is no rush. I'm not rushing to get married to him. We have been together for the amount of time we've been together. So we're still like, although we've been into this almost four years, we're still figuring each other out. We're still, you know making sure that we are building our future before we go ahead and jump that broom. And when we do jump that broom, you know, we'll be prepared for it. We'll be head on. We'll be, our faith in God will be very strong. And that's what it is. I'm not rushing it. He's not rushing it. When it happens, it happens. When we feel we're ready, it's going to happen. Like, so I'm not pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. Let's get married. Let's get married. Let's collect the check. Let's collect the check. Like, that's so shady to me that people get married in the military to collect the check, like, ultimately. And I mean, that's that's for some people. That's That's what they want to do. But as far as me and him, we want to get married for the right reasons. So, yeah. That is is my five things of the most annoying things that people ask me about being a military girlfriend. So make sure that you guys are liking, make sure that you guys are subscribing, make sure that you guys are tuning in because Bonnie will be here. All right. All right. So yeah, that's, that's it.